Hi folks, let's walk through some tips and tricks on rebuilding an STL file to get a better CAD file to work with in both CAD and CAM. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. STL files are more and more prolific. We see them so often from folks that are doing 3D printing, grabbing files on GrabCAD, even customers that are sending in jobs. Let's rebuild this file. First thing, right click on the file name, new component. I'm gonna rename that component rebuilt file. Sketch, create sketch. And it's now asking me what sketch plane I want to sketch on. I'm gonna pick the top of this sort of ping pong paddle handle right here. Now this is a little bit tricky to see which plane you're actually working on, but if I hover over and we pick that, uh, the good news is that was the correct plane that I wanted. The bad news is, see I've got that slightly tan triangle. What Fusion has done is because I picked that STL file. STL files are, uh, generally speaking, a group of triangles, which makes them not so ideal for working on parametric CAD or, or machining toolpaths. Um, it put that into this sketch plane, and I don't want that. I want this to be the cleanest uh, possible rebuild. So I want to be able to create that sketch without auto including that triangle. So I'm gonna hit undo. Go up to your name. Preferences, Design, and Turn Off Auto Project Geometry on Active Sketch Plane. I actually tend to leave this off in general because it's always easier for me to re-include something if I want it. So now I'll do Sketch, Create Sketch. I'll pick the same triangle, but now it didn't automatically include that. I'm gonna orient my view cube to the top, and that's really important, especially if you're relying on the visual reference of certain things here. It's easy to make a mistake if you don't pay attention. P on your keyboard for project. I'm gonna zoom in. I'm gonna start picking points, and points only. So this point, that point, that point, that point. And I'll pick what looks like the end of it over here. Now I need one more point along the uh, curve and I'll just pick one right there. So again, notice I didn't pick any line, uh, line segments or arcs, just a few points. I'm done with my project, so I'll click OK. Now I'm gonna hide my STL file and I would highly recommend getting comfortable using the light bulbs. It's really helpful uh, when you're building out this new model. So it looks like I've got a little constellation of points, L for line, start connecting them. One, two, three, four, and then S on your keyboard, A-R-C for arc, three point arc. I'm gonna click that first point, the last point, and then click right here. L for line, join up, the last one. Let's turn our paddle back on and visually it looks good. Turn it back off. S on your keyboard, M-I-R for mirror. I'll choose the first mirror, that's a sketch mirror. What are my objects that I want to mirror? One, two, three, four. Mirror line, I'll click select. Pick that, click OK. And I'm gonna go ahead and click this center line once and hit X on my keyboard to change it into a construction line because it was just that, it was just to help construct it. It's not something uh, that I need when I go to extrude this. Stop sketch, turn this off, open my STL and zoom in. And I wanna find a line segment like that that appears to be the uh, complete top to bottom height of that extrusion. So I'll hit I on my keyboard, click that, and I'm gonna click once to copy that value. See that? Click to copy, 0.05906. Toggle the light bulbs, so rebuilt on, STL off, 
E for extrude. Click that plane. I'm just gonna paste that value in. Perfect, except I wanted it to go down, so I'll add a negative sign to the front. Click OK. Now there's one more thing I want to do. When I'm done today, I wanna to delete this STL because I want it gone. I want a clean start. One of the problems right now is I hide this body we just made, but look at the sketch. Right click, edit sketch. I've got some things that are purple. Purple means they're linked back, in this case to the other component. So I'm going to get an error infusion if I later delete that component. This model isn't going to change, or if I change it, it's a deliberate change. So I'm gonna left click, drag around everything, right click, break link. That's going to break all ties back to that original model. So the problem now is that everything turns blue because it's not constrained. So for now to fix that, I'll drag another box around everything and I'll just choose fix, unfix. You could also add sketch constraints or other constraints to limit uh, and tie that back to either black, uh, which is fully constrained or green, which is just manually locked in place. Stop sketch, turn my body back on. Okay, so I can turn off my rebuilt file. Let's go back to the STL. So the next thing we've got to do is we've got to make this bottom section. Sketch, create sketch. I'm gonna create a sketch on uh, the center, what would be, let's see here, the X, Z plane. If I turn my origin on, it's gonna be this plane, uh, if I hold down, excuse me, YZ, I misspoke. There we go, YZ. Again, really important that you orient normal to or look straight on. So for here, that means clicking right on the view cube, so I'm looking dead on. P for project, I'm gonna project that point. And again, it's really important to pick points. Here, I'll look at that point. Okay, now I was really struggling when I was practicing for this video, uh, getting these next few points. So we're gonna do a trick. I'm gonna click okay to stop my project, stop the sketch, go to inspect, section analysis. This is what's known as section view, super useful feature. What are the faces I'm gonna use for that? Click the underside of the paddle and click okay. So awesome, that creates this section view. So I'm not looking at the top half anymore. It didn't go away, it's just kind of turned off. Only problem is I don't want this uh, cross hatching in the way. So I'm gonna right click on that at section analysis, edit. That's interesting, it's being inconsistent, but <laughs> toggling show hatching will uh, get rid of that. So now I can see a much clearer view. At the bottom of your screen, on your timeline, right click on that sketch, edit. I'll go back to project and I'm gonna click back view. So I'm looking at it straight on. I'll tip it up just a hair though to see what is the line. See how many lines you've got in triangles intersecting? It's really confusing. What I want is, a, I believe, that line going to that point, but I just want the point. So I'll click right there. And if I follow it up, there we go. Click OK. I'm gonna turn off the STL. And same thing, we've got this sort of constellation of points. L for line. Connect them up. One, two, three, four, five. Now I need a point sort of up here, but there's a trick which is that if I move my mouse down, see I've got the line active. If I move the mouse down and just let it sit over that point for a second and then I move up, it'll auto snap to right as the line is perpendicular and it intersects it and I'll drag it down. We're all black, that's really good. S on your keyboard shortcut, R-E-V, click revolve, I want to revolve that profile and the axis, I'll click here, around like so, looks right, click OK. Turn off our section view, so we can see the whole new part. Uh, looks good, one thing I suspect, I expand my bodies. Yep, so I've got two bodies. 
the top paddle, and the underside. That should really be one body. In Fusion 360, the idea is that a component, uh, which is this rebuild file, is a discrete object in the real world. So this is all one part. It's not two different parts that are you know welded or glued together. So uh, they touch, so I would like them to be one uh, body themselves. The way to fix that is when I revolved this bottom part, so go down here in your timeline, right click and edit that feature. Instead of the operation creating a new body, you can have it join the existing body. Fusion is normally smart enough to, to understand that would have been a join. I suspect because we had the section analysis on, that may be why it didn't. But regardless, easy to fix the beauties of parametric CAD, perfect. And then there's one body. And there we go, folks. One last thing, though. There were a bunch of you know waffle grids on the top of our ping pong paddle. How do we recreate those? So this would be pretty easy, although laborious, to do each one or to create a number of different patterns since you've got some missing corners. Uh, but I've got an idea, and I've not done this, but so we're going to try it live here on YouTube. We're going to hit L for line. I'm going to turn off my STL file because I want to create this sketch on top of my rebuilt file. So I'll click here. Orient by clicking top, so we're looking straight down on it. Turn back the STL file, light bulb on, hit P for project. I'm going to project a couple of points. And just stay with me here. Oops, see I don't want a triangle, I just want a couple of points. P. There we go. Turn the STL off. L for line. I want that to go through. So sometimes when I'm not sure if I like how Fusion is acting, I'll create things out of place. Oops. Um, the other trick actually, L, see how that can snap to all these different things? That's usually helpful. Sometimes it's a nightmare. Hold the control key and it stops snapping to anything. So I'm gonna create a line up here. L for line, hold that control key, and I'm gonna click another line over to here. Now I'll say coincident, and I want this line coincident to here, and I want this line coincident to here. Turn my STL back on, and now what I need to do is create another one. So let's see here. P for project. I think this will be worth it in the end here. Perfect. So I've got my sketch instance. I've got another one of those, but there isn't one right here. Nevertheless, I hit I on my keyboard and I click a point here. Hold control and click the point here. The distance is 0.15748. I'll click it once to copy it. Stop sketch. How tall are these things here? three, nine, three, seven. So E for extrude, turn off my STL actually. Click one, put, paste in that value. Oops, no, the other value. 0 0.03937, click okay. This might not work. Create pattern, rectangular pattern, pattern, change your pattern type to features. I'll click this feature. Distance type is spacing. Quantity, I don't know what it is. Now I'll paste that value. That's what I meant to do. Oh, directions would be this way. Three of them, distance of that, or eight rather. I don't know how many it is. And we'll say eight this way. Oops, we here, switch. 
I want it to go negative, so I'll change the distance to negative there. Look at it top down. Oh, that was coincidence. I think I got uh, pretty close. Is it 9 and 9? 9? 9 and 9. And now what's awesome is you can just click the ones you don't want. So you tell me, was that worth it? I think so. Uh, I don't know if I can uncheck the original. I've never tried that. If not, there's a way to get rid of it. Click OK. Oops. Edit that feature. Big glitch in Fusion. In fact, I'll send this to the Autodesk team, but it doesn't remember these settings, what you uncheck. That's a huge flaw, uh, in my opinion. Uh, I hope it can just get fixed, obviously. Let's see here. So there we've got it, and two of what things we can do, because this is its own separate body, because it's not touching this one, uh, we could expand it, click on it once, that'll underline which one it is. So I could just turn it off, or I could click on it once and hit delete. Uh, ooh, so if I delete it, that may not work, because it's going to, yeah, it's, it's pattern. So if I delete it back here, it's not happy because it, needs that to pattern it. So what you could do is a parametric delete after the pattern has already occurred. So if I drag a box around it and hit delete, hmm, that should work. I guess it doesn't. Any uh, Anybody know? I think what you could do is hit E for extrude, click on it, and drag it down through as a cut. So there what you've done is you've done a parametric event after the pattern that resulted in it being extruded away. Eh, a little hacky, but nevertheless, folks, hope you learned, hope you enjoyed something. Take care. See you next Friday.